Hello friends, Sally the Seeker here. I want to introduce you to another quote friend of ours, like Darrell Brooks. And I've mentioned this woman a few times, and her trial has not begun. And this um, crime occurred two years ago. Well, now it's more than two years. February, I think it's like 24th, 25th, 2020, Sarah Boone. And probably most of y'all have heard from her. Not from her. We don't want to hear from her because she's batshit crazy. Um, but heard of the case. And, of course, what makes it even more interesting for me is that it's, of course, of all places, Florida, where everything really bizarre and strange occurred. And this was in Maitland, Florida, which is near Orlando. It's a very nice area, actually, um, not far from Orlando. Um, and, you know, so her and her, her boyfriend, George Torres, even though it's J-O-R-G-E, you'd think it would be Jorge, but they pronounce it George. Um, they are playing, the night before, they're playing a game of hide-and-seek. Hide and and so they thought it'd be a cool idea. Well, it, well, George can't tell his story, but according to Sarah, they thought it'd be fun to play hide and go seek, or hide and seek. And so she zipped him in a suitcase. Now, right off there, that is not hide and seek. The hide and seek that I played, the person actually ran off and hid somewhere. I mean, there's no mystery there, right? I mean, she's zipping him in a suitcase, which she claims is not, I think the zipper didn't work. She she claims that his fingers can, um, there was a crack um, where, the, where the zipper was not tightly sealed so that he could get, you know, a couple of fingers in and he could, he would be able to unzip it himself. Well, uh, based on the next door, because he died, he was not an he was not able to get it unzipped. But if you hear her talk, you're going to go, oh my God. I mean, yeah, her, her, her and Darrell are different, but the same. As they are both like, you can tell they don't care about anyone but themselves. They're going to talk a lot about nothing, but it's about themselves. And Sarah here is going to talk about how they really had a great day. They did puzzles. They did artwork. And, you know, and then they wanted to play this hide-and-seek hide and game where she zipped them in the suitcase. And um, they were um, in taking alcohol. And so according to Sarah, she zipped them in the suitcase. She went upstairs thinking that soon he would follow her there. And then, according to her, she fell asleep and got up the next morning and is like, oh, my God, he must still be in the suitcase. So she goes down. And, yes, lo and behold, George is still in the suitcase. And um, before she called, well, I guess she opens up the suitcase and he's purple. Not a good sign for George. And so she, before she calls 911, she calls her ex-husband, who apparently she's, you know, depended on. They do share a young son together, who I think is eight or nine at the time. And, uh, oops, okay. Um, so she calls her ex-husband, and so he comes, and he seems, he seems like a stable guy. But he's probably, I think he's kind of like, I think he might have like peeked in the apartment door because they'd live in an apartment, Sarah and George. And I think he, I don't think he went inside the apartment. He's like, uh, no, you need to call 911. And so he waits there and she calls 911 and they're telling her, she goes, he's purple. And, you know, I mean, by all signs, it sounded like he was dead. But they said, go ahead and do the CPR. And she was doing it over the phone with the person. And 
To me, it didn't sound like though she was really doing it. Then she goes, oh my God, he gurgled. Well, the gurgle is something that could happen sometimes, you know, even after death. And so I'm just kind of setting it up for you a little bit. And she's going to talk about how, and from what I, from my understanding, um, on both sides, Sarah and George's, there were cases, I think both were arrested at different times and maybe at the same time for DV. So, so I'm just going to get a little bit of her on here talking to the police. She's outside of her apartment next day. She's very thirsty. I think she wants water or Dr. Pepper or cigarettes and she keeps wanting to go inside the apartment, but they're telling her you can't Sarah because it's a crime scene, but they don't tell her that, but let's face it. That's exactly why they don't. Wanted to. So let's just watch a little bit of her interaction with the police. Oh, and the biggest word she'll say is, I fell asleep. I fell asleep. And it wasn't intentional. It wasn't intentional. So that kind of stuff. I fell asleep and it wasn't intentional. It wasn't intentional is very much like um, Darrell Brooks, subject matter jurisdiction and grounds. I'm just thinking they would make a great pair. Because if you look at her, she looks like a very petite woman. And so, well, but he's with Bubba now. So she may have to find somebody else. But her case is still not gone to trial. I think, I could be wrong. And if y'all have studied up on this, let me know. But I think she's gone through six attorneys. But they may have finally set up for something like in May. It keeps getting moved. But she's she's been there in there for two years so, um, she's not getting that speedy trial, you know, people think. So, let's just listen to her a little bit, talking to the police outside the day after. Did you call it? What time did you call it? Hello there. Hi. There's Sarah right there. Up I did, okay. but then I fell asleep. Okay, okay, stop. 
Are you okay? I don't, I wasn't here. I'm just trying to figure out what happened. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to know what they suffocated her. Like, got an aneurysm hmm. or a heart attack or what? What kind of medical conditions does he have? None that I know of. Nothing that you know of. None that I know of. No. Last night. No. No. All we had was a bottle of wine. Literally, okay. just a bottle of wine. Okay. Doing puzzle artwork. Then we decided to play hide and seek. Mm -hmm. That's all that happened. So how long were you doing CPR on him prior to you calling 911? You tried that all morning? Yes. Okay. And then I called him while I was what doing CPR. What time did you start probably giving me a rough ballpark? Here, let me fill this deputy in, okay? Please, may I have my Dr. Pepper? I am oh, no, so cut now right now. Sarah wants her Dr. Pepper and she wants her cigarette and she's thirsty, damn it. But she's, she is a hot mess. Ma'am, and you can't talk to him until we get down with this, okay? Just don't leave, okay, Brian? Thank you, ma'am. Well, Thank you. Brian, her ex-husband, probably wants to get the hell out of there. Do me a favor. Stand over there by that car. Give me one second. Just give us a second, okay? Ma'am, I'm going to call and break and have to get the one for me. Sarah, you can't go in there. Sarah's really wanting her Dr. Pepper off the counter. She's got to get it, but you can see she's very needy like Brooks. And they're saying, no, you can't go in there. But I'm so thirsty and I need my cigarette and I fell asleep and we were playing games and puzzles. It was the best day ever until I zipped him up. Like, I'm, I care. I want you to sit down because I don't want you passing out. This is probably a lot for you to deal with, right? Sit, sit. I don't water. Water. <laughs> I can get you some water, okay? Just, I want you not on your feet because I don't want you to pass it out yeah, on you her. Yeah, you just chill out, Sarah. I need to use any water. Okay, I'll get some for you. You're trying to, Charlie, but you're You're going to need more than water, man. Okay. Yeah. So kind of tell me how you came here today, or... Well, I've been, um, calling... Come down here, we've got to talk about it. I've been calling since... You've been calling uh, your ex-wife or current yes, wife? Yes, yes. Okay. No, 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 ex-wife. Okay. <laughs> Did you like how he goes, no, 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 ex-wife. Well, see, well, he's going to tell you, but I think he had been trying to call her because it's her time to pick up their son. But we'll let him tell the story. It's his story. About a year and a half. Um, Sorry, if you're playing about 11.30 is when I started calling Go to ahead. find out this, this is supposed to be her day. Um, um, her child. Um, okay. She's generally not very good about always doing it. She, That's right. They called back and said she, she was still there. Or there. Uh, he said they so drank it. Find out if she was going to be getting him or not today. Oh, cool. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So um, I started calling like 11.30. Called every half hour, hour or so. And then finally got a hold of her at... 12.49, which is where she told me what was going on and if I'd come over here, okay. so I came over. She caught it, 12.45? Yeah, okay. or 12.49. 12.49. Um, got over here, told her she needed to call 911, get somebody over here, and then uh, basically she said she needed to go outside, have a drink and a cigarette. <laughs> I walked back out of the house because I didn't really want to Who called? Did you call or did she call? Well, I called. She called me back when I was on my way to make sure I was coming over. But, um, I called her initially. Listen to, her, look, listen to Sarah in the background. I called her initially, yeah. Do you have water in your car by any chance? I don't Nothing? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. No, I don't. Okay, so she called, you know, Winky here. Well, I, called, I called her first. Okay. Um, trying to find out if she's going to be a Lucas. I said, you know, everything's going on. Um, I got my stuff together, put the puppy up in this crate. Um, when I was starting to drive over here is when she called me to make sure I was coming. And then I got over here right after Did you that. go inside and see? And then I, I, I walked inside the front. Um, I didn't see the little front tile area. Come on, step this way. Mm -hmm. I saw legs. Um, he saw legs. <laughs> I, I didn't really want to be in there around 
<laughs> yeah, that's a smart man. Don't well, get yourself involved. Well, you crime scene. I want to know if I were to find your footprint, it would be because you went this far into the house. So did you actually make into the threshold? I don't think I ever made it to the carpet. I think okay. it was just in that, um, I've been over here before. Right, so. right, right. <laughs> yeah. But, um, no, I don't think I stepped past you that um, okay. tile area. Okay. So, um. I, don't think I touched doorknob. I don't think I touched anything. I don't think that really matters. Yeah. Okay, so that's pretty much the gist of what you have. Well, sit tight for us. Um, okay. We're going to make a few phone calls, and then we'll go from there. Do okay, you know if he fine. has um, any med uh, medical issues? or? I, I don't. Okay, but I, you've met him before. I've because... met him before, yes. Okay. yes. They've got a whole fun history. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, you guys have called him in his life. For the two of them? Yeah, he's been recently, like, five times. Really? Okay, I'm not familiar with him. So, I haven't been here personally. It's so they have he, a, He's currently on parole because of it. So because um, of domestic violence with her. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Well, last time he got um. Whatever it's called, like pre-trial something or other. He had to go to a um domestic violence class. Okay. I know he was doing it at a parole officer. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. But I mean, like every time she had him arrested, the next day she was trying to get bailed out. Mm -hmm. so, I, I don't know what it is. Oh, she's getting water from the tap. She's probably going to pass out on us. Okay, well, listen, please do me a f***ing oh, no, no. I'll make a few not, phone not a calls. I mean, Where's your kid need to be picked up? Uh, Lakemont Elementary. How soon, though? Know? Uh, 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock, okay. I don't really move out. Let me try and get this going for you, because I know you need that. Martinez. Doing artwork. Doing puzzles, artwork. Okay. Had a bottle of wine and then decided to play hide and seek. Mm -hmm. So he What gets, time was that? Do you remember? I mean, I know that I was in bed probably by like what, 12:30. Okay. Well, so I went upstairs at least, and I fell asleep, okay. forgetting that he was so in you the suitcase. Were playing the hide and go. Yes. And at some point, you put him in the suitcase. No, he got in the suitcase. So okay. he thought it'd be funny to be put in the suitcase. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna joke with you, and I'll zip you up, and make him, you know, squirm a little bit, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But then I fell asleep. Mm -hmm. I fell asleep. Where was the suitcase? Right where it is. It. Right down there. Yes. You zipped him in there. Yes. Thought he would be funny, a little. Joke. It was. We both were laughing about it, okay. and then I fell asleep. He ain't laughing no more. Where did you fall asleep at? Upstairs. In your bedroom. Yes. Okay. Totally forgetting that he was in the suitcase still. Okay. And then you came back downstairs. This morning? Or this afternoon, yes, when I got up. Park, what time? 12, 30-ish. I was awake, but I totally forgot that he was in the suitcase. He can tell you there's a lot of things that I, plus we have things going on. Job. Yeah, he did tell me. Life, all stuff. that good stuff. So I just totally so forgot. So you began to do CPR on him. Yes. Yes. Um, about Any what gurgle. time this morning did you gurgle. start doing that CPR? No, it was the afternoon. It was the afternoon because the afternoon. I was awake, but then I finally decided to come downstairs at like 12.30ish, whatever it is. And I was like, oh, I forgot he was in a suitcase and he wasn't moving, nothing was happening. So I unzipped him, unzipped him, unzipped him, took him out and started doing CPR on him. Mm -hmm. He was on his way over here. I called you when he got here. 
Once he got here, you saw that? Yes. Okay. And it, like, air was coming out, and he was gurgling, but... Mm -hmm. I could just tell by looking at him. But you, you had to do CPR, you were doing that on your own? Yes. Okay. And then right. the person that was on the phone with me also, I counted with him doing... And he's got no medical, he doesn't take any medication? I don't know. Like, I don't know medical-wise. Like, what, I know he doesn't take any medications whatsoever. Okay. Um, the only thing, like I said... I don't know if alcohol had something to do with it, but we had a bottle of wine. Okay, all right. Here, I want you to sit back down because I don't want Can you. I have one more sip of water, please? Yeah, go, go on. Denver, single 29, residential, audible, 1303 Island Day Drive. I'll do what I can to get you a cup because I don't want you to have to keep doing that. Maintenance and have the carpenters cancel the invitation to the front door. Thank you, Denver, single 29. Thank you, Denver, single 29. On the channel, the cups are like right there. Okay. Sit right here. Don't talk to the ex husband right now. Oh, I won't. Okay. I won't. Can I have a cigarette, please? Ma'am, I can't. She needs that cigarette. It's on the back porch. Nope. All of it. It's secure, okay? Nope. I'll try my We're best trying to go back in there, okay, Sarah. This is a, a pack from someone. So, you know, sit down and I'll try and get you what you need, okay? Just cut, please. Okay. I don't want you on your feet. Yeah. Want to talk over here? has told me um, she explained um, last night that you guys were drinking a bottle of wine um, and around midnight um, you decided you guys okay you guys decided to play hide and seek well we were playing hide and seek and then <coughs> was your son home at the time or no. okay no thank home. goodness with Ryan okay sure about if you woke up this morning it was afternoon i mean i was awake this afternoon but i just didn't want to come downstairs so okay. i just laid in the bed for a little while and then i eventually came downstairs and was confused about where he was and then i was like oh my god he's in the suitcase still so i pulled him out and i stretched him out and i started to try to get cpr on him okay. i called you guys well i called brian okay and then i as soon as he got here which is 30 seconds down the road i called you guys okay and the person on the phone had me do the compressions continually still and count with him and until you guys showed up. Okay. And um, so as a part of our investigation, we obviously have to go inside the house. We have to look at things. Are you okay with us yes. going in the house and looking at things? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and forensics, so we have to have our forensics crime scene investigators come out. Uh -huh. Are you also okay with them coming inside, do taking photographs, and... Okay. Okay. Can I ask, is Brian, or, <coughs> Brian, I'm sorry, George, is he diagnosed with any kind of medical history? Not that I know of. Not that I know of. I, I don't know. I mean, he doesn't take drugs. I mean, we will have the occasional bottle of wine here and there, but I don't know, like... That was going to be my next question. So you guys don't normally drink? You just drink once in a while? or? Well, I'm going to say, like, okay, I guess normal drinking is, like, we will have, like, a glass of wine or two, like, while we're cooking dinner. Sure. And we'll play a board game with him. I mean, we'll see him from there. But, I mean, it's not like... A couple of beers a day. Well, but I don't... Okay, so that gives you a little bit of backdrop of what had happened with Sarah Boone and poor George. 
now she has come down to the police off police office does that sound right department that's what it is um and she came voluntarily i don't know if it was on that day the day after they came down after the incident um or a day after, but I think she, I know that she gave them her laptop. It may have been when she shared with her ex-husband and son, I'm not sure. That and her cell phone, very, very um, happy to do it. Um, and so we get to know a little bit more about Sarah when the interrogation begins. Here we go. Appreciate you coming in. Yes, ma'am. Can I, I want to ask you about these in room? Can we have a moment? Sure. Um, so, obviously, um, you received his autopsy. So, I'm going to read you your rights again because I, we have to talk about that. And since I'm talking about the incident, we just have to do it. Just, just like we did yesterday. Protocol. Just like we did yesterday. Remember I read you the rights? Yeah. Your rights? Yeah. So, this is the exact same thing, but since I'm asking you follow up questions, I need to read them to you, okay? Sure. All right, so you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say may be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer before and during questioning without charge. If you cannot afford a lawyer and want one, one can be provided for you before questioning without charge. Has anyone threatened you or promised you anything to get you to talk to me? No. And do you understand what I just read you? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So this morning we went to his autopsy, um, and we were informed of some injuries that he has uh, by the doctor. So I want, um, so he's got <coughs> scratch marks to his back. I know what that's from. Okay. And um, <laughs> it's called a contusion. Do you know what a contusion is? So like basically you're getting hit and then you know you, you, you get a mark from it. You'll get bruising. Like some, okay. someone hit you or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's called a, a contusion. So he had some injuries to his left shoulder. Um, he had um, he had a cut near his like lip. We could see we could see his um, his mouth was a little. Uh, I haven't laid a hand on him. Okay. I, mm. <coughs> also, too, I he fell off my son's bike. Okay. So I don't know. And he's notorious for running into the wall or the halter. Mm. Oh, wall. Sarah. Okay. I don't, what about the scratches? Because there's also sex. Yes. Okay. Because there's also like a like a scratch on like the back of his neck, like kind of like going, but it's like going straight across. I have no idea what that's from. <clears throat> and they're all recent. Like they 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 occurred recently. It wasn't something that occurred post or that occurred a week ago or two days ago, three days ago. They definitely occurred, you know, the night leading up to when he was. In all honesty, day. all honesty, we have not gotten into it. Okay. That's why, like, the only thing I thought you guys were going to ask me about, which I was going to be honest with you anyway, are the scratch marks on his back. Mm -hmm. Everything else, I have no idea what it is. No mm -hmm. idea what it is. Nonetheless, I've had my son over the house, too, so... Well, your son was there when? When was he last there? Oh, uh, gosh. Last my week? understanding, he was there, like, last Tuesday? Last... I don't know if it was Tuesday, but yes, he was there last week, so... Well, we're talking about Sunday. We're making, we're just talking about what occurred Sunday. Because, like I said, the injuries are they occurred within that time period. So you're talking about day before yesterday, Sunday leading into Monday. You called us yesterday at one. So, but the incident you guys were painting and stuff the night prior. Correct. So we're talking about Sunday. And That's then into why Monday. I'm thoroughly confused because <coughs> we had a good time. Sitting mm -hmm. on the back porch, having wine, and smoking a couple of cigarettes, and then decided to go inside and literally paint, do puzzles, and play, mm -hmm. and listen to music. That's why nobody got out of sorts. That's, this is what's mind blowing to me. Like, I don't, okay. I have no clue. Nobody laid a hand on anybody. He mm -hmm. also had, um, like, on the left side of his forehead, he had basically bruising. Um, and on, um, on um, like his head and skull. I have no idea. As if something hit him. 
I consider I'm not for touched him. Trauma. I have not touched <clears throat> him. I have not touched him. How would you get those injuries? Tell me and we'll both know. I have not touched him. Yesterday, when we took photographs of your overall body um, and they did the buccal swabs, did they go under your fingernails? No. Okay. Are you willing to let us Absolutely. swab underneath your fingernails? Go for it. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea, and I don't want to seem out of sorts, but I have no idea. We had a good day. Mm -hmm. It was a good day. We've had good days lately, mm -hmm. even considering everything that's going on on with our job. I don't know. She seems a little defensive, doesn't she? What do you think? Life in general and ex-wives and everything. It's been good. Like, I don't even know where this is coming from. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think even the know. last physical was probably, you said, I think, what, a month ago? Maybe. Where you got the injury, right? What? You said that was I'll a month say ago? a few weeks, give or take, yeah. A few weeks. That was the last, like, physical altercation between the two of you? Um, he said a month ago he hit you with a curtain rod. Yeah, with a curtain rod. That's why I can't believe you guys didn't take that either. <laughs> <Huh>. <clears throat> like, we've been good. I don't know if, like, it's since the last time he got out of jail. Like, we've been good, and he's been having his classes mm -hmm. and his, seeing his probation officer, who's amazing. So... What do you mean by good? What's your definition of good? <laughs> The probation officer? No, no, you said you guys have been good. What's your definition? I've been good. I don't think you all understand. He comes at me all the time. He comes at me. So it's either I flee or try to go upstairs and go to sleep. Oh, like you did on the night you stuffed him in the suitcase? Yes, she's very um, defensive, I think. Now, not to say that there probably wasn't, you know, DV on both sides, but... Well, you know, she could have gone a little too far this time. She just watched. She's very entertaining and actually aggravating as hell. That's usually what it is. And I don't know if you talked to Brian about any of that, but most of the time when I sleep, I go over there. So, right, yeah. but you're saying that you guys have been good. And when I asked you yesterday, there has the last incident that you could remember was the curtain rod incident, which you said was a month ago, so... Give or take. Right. So what do you mean by he comes after you? Like, he gets belligerently drunk. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if you all have looked through my phone yet and seen any of the pictures and the videos that I have taken. Mm -hmm. And the... At one point, I started documenting everything. Okay. So you all will see in my pictures bloody fingers, split foreheads, he split my nose. I've got this. Right. I don't know if Brian told you about it, where I had to have almost what? I had one really bad surgery, but then it got really, 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 really bad, where I had to go, like, four or five more times afterwards for them to tend to it. Mm -hmm. And poking me in the back of the leg. Right. So it's... Then why are you still with him? Everybody asks me that. When I tell you guys this, I really love him. Like, I do. And I feel like I can help him. Like, I feel like I could help him, which I did, because he's come a really, he came a really long way from where he was in Philadelphia to moving back to here and to dealing with everything else that he's been dealing with. Mm -hmm. I've really helped him. I've bailed him out of jail, what, three times. I've gone to every single hearing and every single arraignment, everything that I did for him. I've gone to see all his public defenders, go to the state. I've gone to the state. I, I did everything for him because I'm trying to help him because I have him. I had hope in him, and he was trying. He was really trying. Just, and then he starts to think about things, and it just, I think he gets overwhelmed, and then it's like, the next thing you know, he's drinking. So it's like, oh, man, I know where this is going to go, so I'm going to go upstairs and read a book, or I'm going to go for a bike ride, or I'm going to do something else. Or I don't want to drink. I don't want to drink. The occasional wine, whatever, or if it's a weekend. That's when you, you have a good time. You don't have to wake up the next day. I have to wake up the next day and do things. I have to tend to Lucas. I have to take him to school. I have all this stuff to do. He doesn't know how to, I guess, maintain himself where I can do 50 things at once. And hey, but my question is, do you have a job, Sarah? 
didn't hear you say anything about your job. A job. You'll know the 50 things more previously, prior that I need to get done. He can't process like that. He didn't process like that. So it, he would literally, not literally, but had smoke coming out of his ears. <laughs> so the next thing you know, he doesn't want to deal with it. I'm going to go get something to drink. So the majority of the time, I would hang out outside or do something else because I don't want to drink. And every time, every time, his job broke his heart. And it made me sad because he had so much pride in his job. And the store that he took care of so much totally went downhill. Mm -hmm. And that broke his heart because he had put so much work and effort into fixing it up. And his manager was awful and basically gave up on all of the employees. So I think that had a huge bearing on why he would drink so much. His ex-wife is bonkers. She was all over him all the time. You understand everybody else. I'm not saying it's not true, but the the boss is mean. The ex-wife is bonkers. I mean, she even throws George under the bus. Everybody else is screwed up but her. All right. Send me money. Send me money. Send me money. How can I send you money when I don't have a job? And he's still trying to take care of me and Lucas by paying a bill here or there, getting some groceries. So he always had something on his mind, which is why, again, I got the puzzles and the bank to try to get him off of it so we don't have a drink or he doesn't have a drink. So when you all mm -hmm. see my phone, you can see all of the damage he has done to me Ooh, and see it all. the videos of him smashing my television because he's belligerently drunk. Mm. Well, most of the time, I just don't want to be there. And I try to help him. I try to calm him down. Mm. Eventually, he just passes out. Well, yesterday, I made it sound like you guys were just drinking, like, a glass or two. Like, yeah, you obviously had the bottle, but you, I mean, you time. told me on the, yeah, but you told me on recording, like, that you were not drunk, he was not drunk, you guys were having I, a good time. I don't get, I can't get drunk. I, number one, I do not want to get drunk. I don't like being non complimentous having my wits about myself. I don't like feeling out of control. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just saying, you're, you're making it sound like, like he's a raging alcoholic today, and yesterday I was kind of asking you those questions, and you're like a little defensive, like, no, we're not alcoholics. So he, I'm not. We are not, you know. So, but you guys were both sober on Sunday, to your knowledge, because when I said you went and passed out, you were like, no, I didn't pass out. I just fell asleep. So now it's kind of like, what is it? Is it? Were you guys drinking and it got out of hand and no. it got physical? No. Or is it? Sunday was one of the better <coughs> days that we have had in quite some time. He's dancing with my dog. You can see that, too, on the pictures, him loving the dog. He loves <laughs> the dog and dancing around, having a good time, and just, just being happy kind of thing. He doesn't know, I can't, I mean, I can get like maybe two, three glasses of wine and I'll be fine, but I have to have my wits about myself because I don't know what to expect. Well, let's talk about Sunday. What was Sunday? How were you, like how many glasses of wine did you have? How many glasses of wine did he have? The bottle was gone. I mean, I don't know if you poured any out. Yes. No, that was from previous. <laughs> you said that there was a half bottle left yeah, over. Mm-hmm. And then um, that you had went, that, or well, I don't even know how the wine, how'd you guys get the wine for Sunday? I'm guessing he went to Publix. He's, does he well, do the, does he like leave the house and you stay home or do you go to Publix? Like, cause I didn't talk about him. Okay. Did but you go with him Sunday to no. Publix? So most of the time what happens is because the convenience store where we get cigarettes is here and then Publix literally is catting walk to it. Okay. So what he'll do is he'll start, go by Publix, and then on the way back, catch the convenience store. Okay. So is that I, what he did Sunday? I, I'm guessing that's what he did because the next thing I know he's walking in with a bottle. Okay. So that's, okay. it's him trying to be nice. So I, that's usually what will happen. Or I'm folding laundry and he'll go run out and do whatever. So where were you guys at on, on drunkenness, not drunkenness on Sunday? 
I you told us you weren't drunk. No, I was not drunk. Right. I was not drunk. So with him, I don't know. I I know when it's like, oh, okay, man, where I have told him, slow down. It's starting to catch up with you. Slow down. Slow down. And another thing, too, is I don't like listening to music with him because he gets too involved in the music and the music oh that he God. listens to is... TMI, Sarah. And, like, just, it makes me fractious listening to his music. So I kept asking him, let's not... Let's just you and me talk. You and me will just be the ones that are talking, which was fine because, I mean, he, we were playing with the dog, whatever, and then it's like, okay, now let's do the painting. We just did the puzzle, took a break, now let's do this. Sure enough, sat down, we're sitting in there talking, laughing, talking about new movies, we're watching movie trailers while we're doing painting and all that other stuff. So it's still background noise to him, because I think that's what he's used to, is having background noise. Where me, I can sit in here all day with not a peep, but he always has to have some kind of background noise, which I didn't mind, because the trailers were cool, and he was interested in showing them to me getting excited about movies that were out or upcoming. Okay. So in your laptop you're talking about? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I mean, and then it, we, it was... But you a, said it was a good day. Like, you guys didn't have any, have any uh, conversations about your relationship. You guys didn't go down, like, the rabbit hole, like, had too many to drink, and you guys start right? getting... Nope. When I tell you this, it made me so happy that he actually listened to what I, I had to say with just, we'll get through it. This will be fine. It's just, it's it's a small hurdle that you and I together will get through because... I'm talking about the money, job, stars. Yes. Nothing no. relationship-wise, though. Like, no issues. Relation, like, did you guys have a conversation about your relationship, or was it just about... Just, like, what's distressing? going on right now. Got it. I try to evoke it from him so he gets it off his chest because I call him the volcano where eventually he's going to erupt. Right. And what he has learned in his classes is to communicate, mm-hmm. which is a huge thing in a relationship. Right. Where mm. he has been practicing you said communication. It, so he actually talks to me about things and unburdens himself. Put it on me. I'll sit there and try and figure it out for you. Like I have almost everything. Oh, great. Not a worry. Just tell me. Get it out of you. But it was, when I tell you, I was so happy. Like, it was such a good day. I kid you not. The weather was beautiful outside. I'm the one that had him go inside so we can do puzzles and painting and listen to music mm. or whatever else he wants to do. So then he starts doing whatever it is we're doing together in the living room and then starts talking because I think he gets comfortable with, okay, you know what? We're here. It is a good day. Let me go ahead and explain myself. So I know. Nobody else knows, but I know. Nobody knew George better than I did. I say that I knew George better than himself. And I tried in every way, shape, and form. Ask everyone. I helped him. I took care of him. I miss him a lot, and I didn't even sleep last night. Oh, my goodness. I miss him a lot. I mean, is there any chance it got to be too much for you and you couldn't handle taking care of him? And I never stopped. Trying to I never help. stopped. That's what I'm here for. I never stopped. I'm here now and I'm still trying to help him. Yeah, we just don't, I mean, it's unexplainable how he got these injuries and... I have no idea. You were the only one with him. A hundred percent right hand to God. I have no idea. Oh, how he don't got do them. that. Nobody touched anybody. Nobody touched anybody. Um, you had mentioned that you take, uh, you would take photos, videos, just kind of like a proof and just in general. Yeah, I started documenting at one point, but that was that was way before I think the last time that he got arrested, where he was flying off the deep end. <clears throat> But then I had him bailed out. I got him out of jail. Right. But because he had violated the pretrial diversion, they this time it's probation. So you don't have a choice in it. You have to go to see your probation officer. You have to go to these classes. It's court ordered. Mm-hmm. Where it took him a while to get used to it and understand, 
They're not messing around. I even went down and met his uh, probation officer, which I say, I, she's, she's wonderful. That's one of my questions that we need to talk to you about. Hugged me and said how much she knows that I take care of him. She called me personally one time when George was at work, when he was working. 42-minute phone call. She and I just saying how grateful she is that George has me. And she knows how hard I'm working to help him, just as she is and just as the classes will. So once he started actually going on a regular basis to the probation officer and then to his substance abuse class and his, I don't know what BIP stands for, Matters Intervention Program, and actually listening to what it is everyone had to say, he changed. Like I could, I could see a change in him where before lashing out, he would think about it and would always come home and show me his papers and we would look over his papers together. Where it's like, wow, you actually are learning this in class? And some of the stuff that they would show them, like videos, he would come home and be like, Sarah, I'm so sorry for what I've done to you. Because for a video that he watches to make him feel that way, where it's like, oh man, I have done her wrong. But he's changed. He's changed. And that's why you're still with him. Even though he's done all these things to you. When I tell you I love him, I love him. Mm. Mm. When you have, when you love somebody, you have no others. Everybody tells me that. All my neighbors don't tell me that. The office, property manager. <laughs> At some point, somebody gets enough, and they have to, to do something to defend themselves. I would just flee. And I don't know if you would like to see it on my phone, or I think it's, I think it's actually on a laptop. I actually, because, and you have to understand too, I have, like, prior to classes in PO, kicked him out how many times? I had him arrested how many times? But you also went down and down I know. The next day. What's I know. What's on your laptop? Um, what was I going to tell you? Oh, previously, mm -hmm. I actually looked up how to file a restraining order. Okay. Because I would take him out, his parents, because of them constantly having to take him back in, his bags of clothes, all his stuff. Mm. The one time, the last time, the father came out and I rate and just not even, I, think, I don't even know if he knew Lucas was in the car, just opened the back of my car and just started throwing all his crap in, just throwing it, like throwing it, like the car would jostle, he was throwing all his stuff. At that point, because I continually did it, not continually, I think I maybe did it three times, and he has nowhere else to go. They got fed up and said, nope, either you're staying there or you're staying here. But if you're staying here at their place, it's permanent. You're not going back over there anymore. So what happens is he pursues me. So I don't know if you all know where Katie Way Trail is. Okay, so we it's literally right right there oh. from our apartment. This is a lot of talking folks. He would folks. ride his bike to work, but you before say? he would leave extra early and come up to the wall, stand on top of his bike and poke his head over because he would know that I would be outside having my morning cigarette and cup of coffee. Where, and I would also know too what time he would get off of work, where I would know, come getting off of work, he's going to do the same thing. So it's not like I ever got like a break from him, where mm -hmm. I told you all yesterday, or whatever it was, I started to feel that it was too much togetherness. And when you have too much togetherness, friction happens. So Ooh. I'm going to go ride my bike. I'm going to go upstairs and read a book. But what he, every, what does he say? Every waking moment, he wants to be with me. So, and mind you, our townhome is either upstairs or downstairs. So it's like, if you would like to sit downstairs and watch a movie or play on the laptop, look up some jobs, you're more than welcome to. I'm just going to be upstairs maybe watching one of my shows or maybe reading a book. So, and then when that would happen, we really needed that. So what's for dinner? And then we would cook together and eat dinner. And then crawl in the bed and watch a movie. Are you talking about this is like recent? I don't know, you kind of like lost me. Like when, what are you it was a while, about? like a little while ago. <clears throat> but now you're talking about, now you're talking about tension building up and that you need space. So. Have you been feeling that way lately, or? No. Okay. No. 
Okay, my thing is too, so you all know. Oh, I hate that she can't talk to her, but um, B, his ex-wife, when I say a monster, she's a monster. Like, it does, she withholds her, their children from speaking to him. Oh, Lord, everybody's so the villain but her. She completely berates him about money, about the father that he is, what he did to her, all this other stuff. It doesn't matter. I mean, mind you, this has not, like, been recent, but... Which is why he didn't even bother calling anymore because he knows that okay. she's going to answer. So gonna it was ancient to history. Can't talk to his why must you talk about it? The other time he talked to her, made, made her talk. Oh my because gosh. That's on my cell phone too, so you can see it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. What does she have to do, though, with anything about <laughs> what happened? Thank you. Monday? Not a darn so I'm thing. I'm saying, like, previously, okay. why the incidents, what happened is. Plays a big part of it. Okay. On top of jobs yeah. and money and groceries and all that. Okay. Sunday, I <coughs> when I tell you this, I have no idea. I have no idea. So anybody else at the house? No, it's just me and him. Um. Since talking yesterday, do you remember any like time timelines better? Like what time? Uh, you guys were playing. What time you? He was zipped up in the luggage. What time was he there? No, it's not. started because we, had, we cleaned the house. Well. Sorry, it's, it's awful, but it's kind of funny when she says zipped up in the luggage. I mean, you can't make this stuff up, people. Well, then, did some laundry. You started the activities around 4, you said? Yes, around 4, 4 30 ish. And then you just said that it was dark when you were playing hunting. And I'm just curious yeah. if you remember. But when we were outside, that's where we would start mm -hmm. and talk about things. And then eventually I was the one that had him come inside. So we could. About what stuff. time do you remember what time that was? Is what she's asking. And you said you went up, you went up to bed around midnight. Midnight. -ish. Fell asleep around 12:30 ish. But those were the only times I had. So I have four and I have midnight. So there's a big gap. So I'm just curious, like. If you recall when you went upstairs to hide in the shower, or like when we started to play, hide and seek, yeah. Well, we went inside probably about. I had to guess. We weren't we weren't out there too long. It was about six ish. Then you're talking about from Hannah outside and like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we have two beach chairs that are out there. Right. Just enjoy the weather. Gotcha. Plus, it started to get dark and gnats and mosquitoes. Yeah. So. Let's go inside. I don't want to be out here anymore. Okay. All right, let's go. So we're doing whatever. We did it for a while because that puzzle, I don't know if they took it or they saw it. Um, worked on the puzzle again, finished it, started to paint. Well, started listening to music for a little bit, started to paint. Uh, can we turn the music off? No problem. Started to talk, paint, whatever. Is when I went to hide upstairs originally? No, that's when we were like painting. So then it's like, okay, well, I we can't, I don't want to paint anymore. Let's just, uh, come on. Okay, you want to play hide and seek? What he does is, okay, tag, you're it. Well, she'll like, okay, we know. Okay, take off. Mm -hmm. That's what we did. And then you went upstairs and then he didn't come up and you came down. And the suitcase was there originally because you guys were planning to do donations, and so it was already suitcase. there. Um, have you guys ever played the, you said you played hide and seek like probably three times in your relationship. Mm -hmm. When you have played, have you ever zipped him up in a suitcase prior? No. <laughs> okay. So it was just kind of like that problem. It's so there. bizarre. It it's funny. And it was in play because. Why do you say it like that though? I would never do that. I mean, we were playing. No, I know, but I'm, but I'm saying, I'm, well, I'm talking about hide and seek, which is a game. So, the suitcase originally is in our closet, buried all the way to the back. If you, I don't, I know the CSI people saw our closet. Our closet needs to be cleaned out. Oh my God. Out. So, the closet, it's the really puzzle? Bad. My son's clothes need to be cleaned out really bad because they don't fit him anymore and I'm tired of looking at them. So, he took it upon himself, including that suitcase to take it downstairs so we can get all of our clothes, our donations and everything, and just leave the whole thing by the 
clothing and shoe things at my son's school. No, we're just, ask, I'm just asking out of the, in the past, like, have, have you ever zipped him up in anything, jokingly or not, but obviously no. I understand, you know, you're claiming that Sunday it was a joking matter, you were laughing, yes. he was laughing, but what I'm just asking is in the past, like, is this something Absolutely that you guys not. normally do? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, we were actually this last game running out of places to hide because we have a town home where it's upstairs or downstairs. Oh, so. dear. Um, okay, so do you remember making any videos or maybe having any cover, anything, any photos, videos that you remember doing on your phone on Sunday? <coughs> no. Uh, I think I took a picture of a dog. Okay. But your phone is password protected, you have the password, he has the facial recognition, so it's not like someone else could be on your phone. No, I have both. But you have the face and the password. Yes. Yeah, but he only has the face, correct? No. To be able to get onto your phone, you told me that he looks at the phone. Oh, I misunderstood. I thought you were asking if I did. Yes, it's me. Okay. Does he have access to your phone? Because you said it's yeah. your phone. Okay, how does he have access? Sarah, can I buy your phone? Yeah, it's right there on the kitchen counter. Okay, but how does he get it to it because it's password protected? He'll, he'll come and get it to me and I'll just do the face thing. Where sometimes too, like, he's, <coughs> but he'll joke with me and say, okay, I need to borrow your phone. And he'll hold it while I'm cooking or doing something, do the facial recognition. Okay, so he doesn't know the password and he doesn't have the facial recognition. No. But he is the only other person that would use your phone, I'm yes. assuming, other Well, phones. Lucas. Right. But Lucas wasn't there Sunday. Right. Um, so, to your recollection, no videos on Sunday. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I mean, I like, I guess I thought <coughs> I, I maybe took a picture of them, the two of Tess and the dogs, and George and had them dancing, but I mean, or the, it's just Tess. Okay. Um, so I have something that I want to show you that we found, um, and it was from your phone. Oh boy. I I would not do that. You wouldn't lock some zip somebody in a suitcase? Well, <laughs> I couldn't like completely lock it. I mean I opened it with one finger. I left enough in there for him to get out. Okay. And I wasn't planning on going upstairs and going to sleep. You, said it, you guys are scaring me. Why? We just want you to watch this. It came from your phone. Don't you want to know what's on it? Yes, please. <coughs> Let's see. <coughs> Is it long? Because I don't know how much I can take. I continuously throw up. I don't sleep. I don't want to see it if that's okay. 
Well, it's on your phone, and you can either explain it or we take it for what it is. Yeah. We're just trying to give you the opportunity to tell us what's going on. That's it. It's that long? Two minutes.